We're having to hide here in Barnes and Noble because they say we had to leave because it's 11 at night. Oh. <laughs> Don't try to teach ignorant people. They have to learn the hard way. What was the principal Mark Cuban said? How many times do you have to win? You only have to win once. Show us the muscle. Put that down for a second. Show us the gun show. Here we go, guys. Drum roll. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Yay! Warren Buffett way. I actually have this book. A million copies sold. We're not throwing you, it into the basket. You don't know how to... Yeah, that's the basket. This is the basket right here. Getting ready for my live call. Ignore my hair. People say, what are you afraid of? I'm afraid of doing this again. Have you ever thought about this one thing? Had you, since you were about 12 years old, been spending 15 minutes to 30 minutes a day in the four areas. That's it. So 15 minutes a day would be one hour a day. Let's say you had done it five days a week. Whatever age, we got people at 50. So now you're 12, you started 40 years later. The Rock, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Steven Spielberg, Warren Buffett, they all started at under 12 years old. Can't get him in the car, damn it. <laughs> you did amazing, brother. Escape a couple times, no problem. You're being very mean. Come on, reach size. it. I'm thinking big. <laughs> you need to be able to grow big. Oh, I read this one, Jack's Life. Read about Jack Nicholson, guys. This Joker's an OG of Hollywood. People are like, what book should you get? I'm like, just get lots. This one. This is a book not by Kim, but it's about Kim. What do you think of that? I'm definitely gonna get that. Some, oh, this is the other one that I have. It now this book, me. I don't know if you should be reading that book. You're all, that's a dangerous book. Power up now. Yeah, because you're already kind of a hippie. Now you're gonna that's read weird. a you're gonna read a hippie book. I'm not. You're a gonna hippie. become one I'm thing, guys. And I'm hippie. One thing, guys. What you want to do in life? Whatever your natural inclinations, you want to study the opposite. So if you're already a hippie. Don't just buy hippie books. If you're in a new age spirituality, don't just buy buy an atheist book. If you're an atheist, buy a new age. That's true spirituality, by the way. <laughs> oh, I got beat up. My ribs hurt. <laughs> Two nights ago, I was at a salsa dancing place, and I was taking video at this Lamborghini with these girls for my video show, and a guy came and jumped behind and went, was like photobombed. So the girls are like, what are you doing? And he goes, if that's what I think it is, I'm gonna punch him in the face. So I said, what? It's a little Asian guy. He said, I'm gonna punch you in the face. Then he walked away. I said, okay, then come punch me in the face. So he came like this. And so he was a little guy, skinny. So what do you think I should have done? Yeah. Everything is about space. Yeah. Exam. I don't know who the guy are. Yeah. But my space, this line, I'm here. I am here. I know he can scream, can do whatever. The moment he passed this line, it's a fight. Yeah. So just wait for him. That's what I did. Exactly. I just waited like this. Yeah, but when but he I passed. Put my hands up. No, no, just come here. Yeah, I was, that was like. The hands, it's like, hey man, take it easy. Yeah. But you at it. Yeah. Whatever he tried to do, you have defense and attack position at the same time. Yeah. I think he wanted a lawsuit because he goes, all right, you punch me first. I'm like, what? what? No. <laughs> <laughs> when he come inside your zone, you in so self-defense. If I would, if, I, if he would have come, you, would you have? You yeah. yeah. I'm a grappler, not a boxer. Yeah. And when you grab you can throw him, you don't have to hurt him. Yeah, I didn't want, he wasn't a exactly. little guy. So, so Barnes and Noble, how's it working here? Out. It's good. It's good. It's a good place. I, my favorite part is kicking you guys out at night. <laughs> Look at how many books we're getting. Yeah, you know I love you guys. Business. We keep we're paying paychecks. This is paychecks right Business. here. Look at this. How many books do we have in total thus far? Thirty-two. Woo. No, I'm told you, I just said a random number. Business from competitors. How do you learn from competitors? Find the best competitor and watch them like a hawk. You know, log in every day to their website. 
I'm a, what am I doing wrong, Pooh? Rotation. Which one are you in? Is that right there? Ty, if there's no uh, competitors in a market, how do you test a new idea? Uh -huh. Easy to fix. Now, what happened here is Andrew was talking crap to me <laughs> in, the, in, in the house, so I'm a little bit competitive. No one wants to be embarrassed. So I decided I'd invite him out. He said I was just bricking everything. So I said, welcome. Welcome to my brick show. <laughs> Brick show. Uh, um, they want you to see the famous sign. Knowledge. Other one. I like more than basketball. <laughs> the garage <laughs> one. What Here on my court. Oh, this one. What does my shirt say? It says, "Don't try to teach ignorant people. They have to learn the hard way." Sometimes yep. I tell people, "Man, you need a mentor. You need a coach." And people are like, "No, nah, man, I can learn them all." I'm like, "Okay, you're gonna be a millionaire at 105." That's, you're going to be good at basketball. If you don't have a coach, you're going to be good at basketball about 132. There you go. You're going to be the oldest person in the NBA. But they don't take anyone at that age. You know, like all these people here in Beverly Hills that have Ferraris at 100. You want to have a Ferrari at 100? Don't lose this footage. I might never be able to do this again. <laughs> uh, what's the questions we're having? More questions? Andrew, I have I silenced my critic? Intimidate you. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. The only people that now I move step back to the NBA three line here. So for all of you who say, Woo! always say yes the first time to something. That's the lesson for everybody here. No matter how cool an opportunity is, if you have a hundred people, one. Per I guarantee you, if there's a hundred people and you say, here's a lottery ticket that could win you a million dollars at no cost, there's going to be somebody who's like, nah, I don't want it. You should always take a lottery ticket, even if it's only one in a trillion chance, if there's no cost. Somebody's got to win it. Exactly. I mean, you wouldn't want to buy a lottery ticket, but someone give, you know what Warren Buffett says about investing in gold and try Munger? They go, we don't think it's a good investment because it has no income behind it. But if somebody gives us gold, we'll take it. <laughs> so that's how I feel. Yeah, I'm yeah. Because you have a saying like, a farmer give a horse to you for another farm. You never look the teeth of the right. horse. Right, look in the mouth. <laughs> never look the gift sure. horse. Except the horse. Exactly. So this is a gift horse. You get to train with world class. <laughs> if you go to any other jujitsu school, basically, you're not going to get. He's, a, he's got a coral belt. How many people have that belt? I believe the coral belt, maybe so far, maybe 20 to maybe 30. 20 ever. Because you have to have at least like 30 You have to have a black belt for 30 years, so. He so said, you, him. No, just challenge him. He has to do the three, one. Yeah. Right away. Two. Two. Very good. Oh, oh. Have you seen sometimes when you see guys not wise on the street, when you see two guys come face to face, hey man, stay like this. And I be face to face like this. My brother, you do that if you're a street guy who fight all the time in the street, the head butt right there. It's kind of come like this, and he can knock you out in seconds. Remember, in the street, the first punch count a lot. Because it's the surprise punch. What happens doesn't matter who it is. You talk like this, you start, you stay there. The moment I start come to you, that me are gonna, it's almost like don't show you're gonna fight. You show like, hey man, exactly. Why? You don't show aggressive, but you're ready to grapple. Mm. You're gonna grapple him. Remember, <laughs> we specialize in grappling. We're not special, we wanna do a boxing or anything. You wanna grapple him, you do what we do best. <laughs> Submit or control him. When he's swing the punch, no, like do like this, move in circle like this. Okay. Like you want to touch my ear. You see, you drill to slide the hands. When you reach here, touch over here, you pull right there from that. Yeah. You come here and go right there to the body. Mm -hmm. This leg come around here. See? Let's do this drill. So for all of you who are like, you know, I'm getting this program, people are going to laugh at me, spend a thousand bucks. I'm like, my friend, there's a 
video in the accelerator. Make sure you watch it from Cole Hatter. He told me, he said, Ty, I was a firefighter. I got in a car crash. I was paralyzed from the legs down. And uh, next thing you know, I'm broke, don't have my job. And I started going to real estate uh, investment conferences. And the first conference was like three grand to go in the premium version. He went to the free version and his friend said, I ain't spending three grand. I'm saving for a vacation with my family to Hawaii. And Cole said, I looked at him and I said, I'm gonna spend three grand on this course and then I'll be able to buy my own place in Hawaii. You're gonna go on a vacation once, I'm gonna have a vacation house. Rich people have vacation houses. Poor people go on vacation and save up all their money for one week of a vacation. Rich people go, no, I'm just going to my place, wherever I want to be. So both had $3,000, both invested it. Cole Hatter's now done 200 real estate deals. He's in his early 30s. He's a multimillionaire. He does whatever he wants. He collects Vipers and old American muscle cars. He's always emailing, texting me, this is better than your Lamborghini. He sent me a Viper, whatever. But where his friend was cynical, I was like, I ain't spending money on that. And the answer is, yeah, that's why you're going to be broke forever. How's it going, Nathan? Did you get it to him? Yeah, I did. They wrote you back? Okay, so that is how I want you guys to think. When everybody else goes left, you go right. When the whole world goes right, you go left. And when the whole world's going left and right, you stop and think. And when the whole world stop and they're fearful and they're freaked out and the next econ economic, you know, people haven't figured out that recessions come about every five to 10 years like clockwork. Who here surfs? Waves come, I used to be, I almost became a beach lifeguard. I passed the thing to become a lifeguard down in San Diego or it's called junior lifeguard because I was younger. It's a tough program. That one, people vomit and faint and it's like the Navy SEAL. Not as hard as a Navy SEAL, but hard enough. And, I, and, and one thing, you know, you learn. Waves come in cycles. They come in sets, they call them. And so no surfer's like, you ain't gonna believe this. The waves are smaller now and then they're gonna get bigger. No surfer's like, man, there's a hurricane out there and you ain't gonna believe this, big waves are coming. No, they read, they already know, they're expecting, they're hyper aware. They're gonna be a recession, but I've been through, as a business person, I've been through two, uh, two big recessions. My biggest years ever, 2001 recession, that's when I figured out internet marketing. That was my big breakthrough. Then 2008, that was another huge breakthrough. In my, I remember making more money, and I wasn't even, I wasn't trying to capitalize on them. You know, it was just, it just worked out. The recession has nothing to do with sharp people, okay? Now, I'm not calling everybody else stupid. I'm saying they're uninformed. Everybody, I knew a real estate crash was coming. I started to know enough. By 2007, I was telling, my mom was like, we should all invest in real estate. I'm like, no, I didn't get burned at all in real estate. Not because I'm so smart, but because I'd been through what this accelerator is. I did it in person. And I remember just my, Alan Nation told me one thing. When the rent, the KPI metric he said is tie. If the rent is 10 times more uh, than the annual, or I'm sorry, if what you could rent it out for annually is a 10th of what you're paying for it, you're probably paying too much. So let's say you can rent it out for five grand a month Okay, that's 60,000 a year. For him, he didn't want to spend more than 600,000 on that property. Now that's changed a little bit, that metric wise, but let's say even it's 15. So for a million dollar property, you don't want to, if you can only rent it out for five grand a month, you probably don't want to spend more than a million bucks. That's a bubble situation because everything is based on present discounting of future revenue. That's a more advanced term that I'll teach you guys in the accelerator. 